Qassam, the military arm of Hamas, released footage yesterday of a drone attack on some Israeli soldiers. First, I'm going to show you the video, then I'm going to go over it frame by frame. I'm going to explain what Israel needs to do in order to help mitigate the consequences of these attacks. Uh, this video will probably be a Substack exclusive, although I will try to recut it for YouTube. Uh, I implore you to send this video to every soldier in the IDF that you can reach. Uh, if you're an American soldier, you need to start thinking about drone dropped munitions right now or you're going to end up like these dudes. So first, here's the video. Okay, a couple of things. I believe that from the posture of the soldiers in the video, this area that they're in is what the U.S. Army would call an assembly area or maybe a, a staging area. These soldiers are probably close to the front lines, but not so close that they feel in danger. Uh, these soldiers were in a depression. In this case, uh, it's a man-made basin that was probably cut out from the ground by bulldozers and protected by a berm, uh, as well as some tanks. Uh, so these soldiers could rest or eat or get ready without having to worry about being observed, and they were wrong. As you can see here, at the edges of the basin, there's two Merkava tanks and I believe one D9 bulldozer. I also believe um, this uh, may be a clearly marked field hospital or aid station. I, I can't really tell from the video, but those, uh, that red banner might indicate that, that this was an aid station. Field hospitals receive Geneva Convention protection. While I don't entirely believe that Qassam abides by the Geneva Convention, because they certainly didn't on October 7th, uh, in this case, uh, it seems like they chose to drop a drone drop munition on this group of soldiers. Most likely, this group of soldiers presented a better target than the tanks, the bulldozer, or the field hospital, mainly because they were out in the open and you could count those soldiers. So this actually provides us with an interesting data point, which I'll get to in a second. The drone drop munition was most likely an M26A2 grenade modified with fins and an impact detonator. I initially had trouble identifying it because it, the grenade certainly didn't look Syrian or Iranian, but uh, the M26 grenade is still used by Israel. Uh, so this may be a stolen grenade or a locally manufactured Qassam copy. Um, and by the way, I got a lot of this information from CatUXO. If you're not a member of CatUXO and you're interested in munitions, you probably should be. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, based on the time it took for the grenade to hit the ground, which was uh, 5.13 seconds, I estimate the drone was 126 meters in the air. You probably aren't going to hear that or see it unless you're looking for it. Uh, imagine hanging a pizza box on a goalpost and then trying to look for it across a football field. It's going to be tough to see. And while we can't tell the extent of the injuries, at least five guys fell from the explosion. So you may have at least five wounded or, or five casualties of some sort. Also, uh, if you look at the surrounding area, these guys look like they were just standing around doing what we in the U.S. Army call smoking and joking. Based on the debris on the ground, I think these are water bottles. Uh, these other green things are probably rucksacks. So I think these soldiers might be infantrymen who are resting or maybe they're preparing for a mission uh, because if they were tankers or transportation, I, I think their gear would be on their vehicles. Couple of thoughts. Um, Ukraine has been at war with Russia for 22 months now and Russia has suffered immensely from these small drones. Uh, for 22 months, Israel considered the war in Ukraine to be Ukraine's problem. And they missed the chance to send advisors and develop that, that two-way information exchange. Uh, there's a term in Hebrew, and the Israelis say it a lot. It kind of means, ah, don't worry about it, it'll be all right. Late for work, you still have a job. Coffee order wrong, at least you have some coffee. I ran as the bomb. Ah, Ryan, Chavel Shali, Yabaseder. We'll shoot it down. You worry too much. Everything is a Yabaseder until one day it's not. 
And I think that the IDF kind of thought that they were dealing with the same old Arabs who couldn't get out of their own way in 1948, 1956, 1967, 1973. Well, the Russians found out the hard way that the nature of warfare has changed. My fear is that the IDF hasn't learned the lessons of Ukraine because they haven't really been paying attention. So here's my advice for any Israeli soldiers who might be operating in or near Gaza at this time. Number one, stay undercover unless you absolutely have to go outside. There may be a reason why this drone operator chose to hit the large group of soldiers instead of dropping on what I think might be that medical tent. Uh, and it, it's probably not because Qassam uh, suddenly had a change of heart and decided to act like a real army and follow the Geneva Convention. It's probably because anything under that tent was unknown, but a group of soldiers in the open is unknown. So, if you have to go to the bathroom, shadow team, do it in the vehicle, in a bag or a bottle. Don't do your business outside. Don't congregate outside in large groups. Uh, number two, if you have to perform vehicle maintenance, only one dude gets out of the vehicle unless you absolutely need a second soldier to help you perform that, that maintenance task. Number three, if you absolutely have to get out of the vehicle in force, meaning multiple guys, remain five meters apart. I know this sucks. I know it's gonna make it a lot harder to, to give a briefing or to eat chow, but remember that a drone and its munitions are of limited quantity, and that drone has limited duration of flight. So the operator is gonna look for the most bang for their buck, so to speak. Uh, number four, uh, you need an air guard at all times. If you're at the halt, you need to have a guy scanning the sky at all times. Maybe swap that air guard out every 10 minutes so they don't get tired. And finally, be a hard target. When I was a heavy weapons platoon sergeant, I used to tell my soldiers to constantly move the turret back and forth. Because if you're, if you're only moving your head scanning for targets, um, the adversary, they, they can't see your head moving. But they can see your turret moving. So if they see that turret moving, they're more likely to think that you're alert and you're looking for them and you're a harder target. The adversary is looking for a soft target, an easy target. Don't be that easy target. I want you to live. If the adversary sees that you're dispersed and one dude is on air guard, they are less likely to attack you and they are more likely to look for a unit that is being complacent. Again, uh, please share this, especially with other NATO or Israeli soldiers. Uh, if I can do a YouTube cut of this video, I'll make it Creative Commons. So uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to download it, translate it to your own language, and disseminate. Uh, everything I just mentioned applies to the U.S. Army and the Marine Corps as well. So we, mean, we may need to change our TTPs, our tactics, techniques, and procedures. Um, to take armed drones into account. And that means never congregating in the open. And if we do have to congregate in the open, do it five meters apart. Uh, if we practice that now in peacetime, we'll be ready for the next war. I do not want you learning this the hard way. Uh, the uncensored video is also available on my Substack uh, for my Substack subscribers. Uh, if you want to use this video for hip pocket training, just send me an email from your military account you know, an Israeli military account, a NATO military account, I will give you download access. Uh, and finally, if you like my uh, Bunker Branding um, Landmine Marker hoodie, you can get that from BunkerBranding.com. This is my job now. This is how I make a living, and buying a t-shirt or a hoodie helps pay my rent and, and pay for this content. And thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe. In a world where fashion meets firepower, where style becomes strategy, it's time to gear up for the ultimate mission with Bunker Branding. Introducing the Rock Out With Your Chalk Out t-shirt, a tribute to the fearless air cavalry. Feel the adrenaline rush as you don the pride of the skies. For those of you who dare from the air, precision and power unite when you think outside the bomb. And don't miss our Live Laugh Launch t-shirts for Patriot and High Mars, because sometimes defending freedom means bringing the thunder. Finally, for the true defender of the seas, we present Department of the Boat People. Sail with honor and show your allegiance to the world's mightiest maritime force. With these shirts, hoodies, and stickers, along with the tow missile, landmines, and drone warfare. These aren't just shirts, they're statements. They're your way of saying I stand for strength, 
unity, and style. Get yours at Bunker Branding today.